put out of heaven because he said I will not serve he would not praise the Lord because he was wanting the praise for himself when you and I praise the Lord the enemy has to go Amen. when you and I praise the Lord the enemies of God scatter Amen. when you and I praise the Lord the devil can't stand it when you and I praise the Lord in the power of the Holy Spirit, the enemy is confused and he can't understand it. Mm -hmm. So you and I need to get our praise on. <laughs> we need to keep in this spirit of praise. You heard what Silas said. He introduced you by telling you that I had an amazing experience in the upper room, and I did, because we were in an atmosphere of extravagant praise of our God. Amen. I didn't know what was going to happen to me in that upper room. As a matter of fact, I didn't even want to go to the prophetic consultation. But you know, sometimes when you just show up, you just show up, God can do something supernatural in your life. Amen. Amen. So I want to ask the music ministry if we could go back to that song that we sang right at the beginning where our leader was leading us to praise the Lord. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> where's our leader? Where's our, where's our music ministry leader? Is he still here? Where, praise where? the Lord. Uh, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap for the Lord.
you Lord when you and I begin to praise God the atmosphere changes amen? amen and we get ourselves prepared for the supernatural move of God amen, amen. we become expectant we, we expect that the Lord will show up and do something mighty for us can you imagine what goes on in heaven can you imagine the Lord looking down on us right now and seeing us praising him how he's rejoicing over us as we rejoice in him. Amen? Amen? So when you and I praise God, we open ourselves up to the multiple outpourings of the Holy Spirit. When you and I open our mouth to utter praise, something happens inside of us. Our countenance changes. We could be in a low place, but when we begin to praise God, he begins to lift us up Amen. and our bur burdens begin to dissipate Amen. and we begin to have new focus on what we're supposed to be focusing on because whatever troubles we're going through are just for a short while. Amen. 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 But you and I have a destiny in the Lord. Your retirement plan and my retirement plan is praise of God. Amen. Amen. So really, we never retire. We never retire. We have to practice on earth what's going on in heaven, magnifying our Lord. Amen. So you and I joining together for this occasion is, is just uh, pleasing to the Lord. It's pleasing to the Lord. The enemy didn't want this to happen, but the Lord wanted it to happen in his time, in his way, on his appointed day that he chose for us to be gathered here. And I'm proclaiming that this space, this sacred space that we're in today is the upper room of Pentecost Amen. because it's filled with praisers of God. I want to begin today by sharing an experience with you uh, of what happened as the renewal, Catholic Charismatic Renewal, was planning for the 50th Jubilee celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit on the Catholic Church. You heard in the introduction that Silas gave, Larry and I were invited to be a part of the leadership in the renewal. There were about 160 leaders from around the world Catholic Charismatic Renewal, and we were gathering in Bethlehem in the City of Bread for a prophetic consultation. That means we were gathering together to see what was the Lord saying to the renewal. And at that consultation, there was much freedom. There wasn't a, a full schedule of programs, as you might imagine. Anyone was able to give a prophetic word. Anyone was able to give and share something that was stirring in their heart about what the Lord was saying to the renewal. And as our time together began, we heard from the leader of International Catholic Charismatic Renewal. Her name is Michelle Moran. And she gave these words. She was giving a teaching from Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14, and she said these words, he will give the rain for your land in due season, the early and the latter rain. And she explained that in biblical lands, the early rain was known as the autumn rain, and that is the rain that makes seeds germinate. 
But the latter rain was the spring rain, and the spring rain brings in the harvest. And at that moment of time, Michelle was explaining to us that we were kind of at a crossroad. We were in between the early rain and the latter rain. We were anticipating because we were entering into the year of Jubilee. But I'm here to tell you now that some time has passed since that event, and you and I are in the latter rain of harvest. God wants to use you and me to bring souls to the kingdom of God. Amen. But first, we have to make our own selves ready. We have to make some decisions. We have to be, as we say in America, all in. We have to be all in for what the Lord wants us to do. No straddling the fence. No a little bit over here and a little bit in the world. A little bit of the Lord, a little bit of the world, and we're not balanced. The Lord says, I am the balancer. Amen, amen. And I want you to be all in for me. Amen. Because the Lord does not disappoint. Because when you and I were baptized, we received an anointing. We received a seal. We received an indelible mark that no sin can erase. Amen. We're marked for God. We're set apart for God. And what we're set apart for is holiness. Amen. The Holy Spirit comes to do what? To make us holy. We cannot make ourselves holy in and of ourselves. But the power of the Holy Spirit in us can activate our flesh and our human will to desire to be holy. Amen? Amen? We can't do that on our own because it's supernatural. And you and I are made natural. But you see, the Lord had it so that at our baptism, we would receive the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. So it is right that every year at Easter, we renew our baptismal promises. And the first thing we say when we renew our promises, Father says, do you reject Satan? And the whole church says, I do. We cannot reject Satan without the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Because you see, we're natural. The enemy is preternatural, but God is supernatural. So God infuses in us his Holy Spirit. So that's why we can say, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen? God is about a mighty work. He's about a powerful work. He's, he's about this latter rain. We're called to be the latter rain people. And what happens during the latter rain is the harvest is brought in. And what happens during the harvest is that the wheat is gathered from the fields. And the wheat that's gathered from the fields is placed on the threshing floor. And the threshing floor is the place where the wheat is cut from the chaff where the good is cut from the bad. For you and I, the threshing floor is a place where we are cut, where sin is cut from who we are so that we become the living good that God wants us to be. And God is calling for you and me to be about the harvest. And to be about the harvest means to lay down your life on the threshing floor so that the Holy Spirit can come and can, can, can remind you of the ways that we offend the Lord. To remind us of what things that we do that keep us away from God. We have to be willing to surrender to the Holy Spirit. To allow him to reveal to us our sinfulness. So that we can get right for God. So that we can be about the business of the kingdom of God. Can you give a hand clap to the Lord? God has been giving 
uh, Larry and I this sense that we do need to be on the threshing floor. We need to be in a place where we make a decision that we're going to separate from sin. I remember one day we were in our home and I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit so strong. And so I went to where Larry was and I said, honey, honey, the Holy Spirit wants us to be serious about our holiness. And he said, yes, dear. I thought that's what we were already doing. I thought that's what we were already about. But you know, you can know something and then the Holy Spirit can renew it in you and then you know it in another way. And the Lord began to reveal to me that yes, making a decision to, to visit the sacrament of reconciliation was very important. So important that we increased our going. We try to go once a week now so that we can be fresh for the Lord, so that he can use us in power. Because you see, the enemy wants to use our sins against us.